Hello everyone, welcome to today's live webinar. There are about 150 people connected, so I want to thank you for your great attendance. I'm Serena Lorenzi, I'm Communication Manager at Milestone, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. Today, we are here to give you practical guidelines on sample preparation for elemental analysis. We would like to provide you with the knowledge and the necessary tools to expedite the analysis, even for unknown samples. Today's agenda is key parameters in a digestion process, the choice of acid mixture, guidelines on various matrices. Milestone is in the field of sample preparation for 30 years. Figures are impressive, over 20,000 units installed in 80 different countries. Therefore, we feel comfortable in saying that we have as much expertise as possible for helping you in solving your needs. Before we get started, I wish to inform you that my fund organizes these type of webinars once a month. So follow us on our LinkedIn page or on our website to stay tuned. And we will be pleased to receive your feedback on this webinar or any suggestion of topic you'd like to be developed in our future appointments. I wish to say that this webinar is intended to be interactive, so we encourage you to ask questions. You can submit questions then anytime by typing them in the Q&A box that you can find on the right bottom part of your presentation window. We will answer to some questions at the end of the presentation. For all the questions that will not be lively answered, we will reply by separate email. The slides will flow automatically during the presentation. If you have any technical problem in viewing or hearing the presentation, just write me in the chat box and I will try to help you. Okay, let's just take a quick look at today's speaker. I want to introduce Gian Paolo Rota, who joined Milestone 15 years ago as Digestion Product Manager. Gian Paolo's primary, primary role is to educate and train Milestone's customers on microwave sample preparation technique and develop applications to support Milestone sales activities. So this presentation today will last about 40 minutes. Thank you. and. Um, Hi, Gianpaolo, you have the floor now. Thank you, Serena, for uh, the nice introduction. Welcome, everyone. So, as already anticipated by Serena, today we will uh, see some practical guidelines on uh, sample preparation. So, the intent of this presentation is basically to give you some guidelines to make a method of development for the digestion of your samples. So we will see different samples. We will uh, uh, speak about uh, different type of uh, uh, applications. However, take this as general guidelines. So of course, uh, uh, if you have anyway some specific questions of your samples, you can write in the chat box and then I will answer you. So before to start uh, to speak about application, a small introduction about the Milestone company. Milestone uh, is uh, it's an Italian company and uh, we have a production faci facility in Germany and Switzerland. And we have more than 30 years of experience uh, in uh, microwave sample preparation. We born as a company for microwave sample preparation. Our first unit was a microwave unit uh, to digest the samples and also direct mercury analysis. analysis. We have today over 20,000 microwave systems installed and 2,500 mercury analyzers. And we work in the different type of fields. So we work with companies that are in the applications of very different type of uh, materials and samples. So we work with in industry that serves like academia, government agency, private industries and contract labs. And we cover applications from enviro to pharmaceutical to petrochemicals and inorganic samples. So we have a good experience, uh, uh, a big experience, uh, especially in sample preparation. And uh, 
Today, I hope to give you some, uh, uh, a part of this experience in order to help you in your work in the lab. So, let's start to speak about uh, the sample preparation. So, usually when we have to digest the sample, the first things we have to do is uh, to understand uh, the parameters that are important for the sample preparation itself. And the parameters are usually four. So, we have uh, the sample type, so we have to recognize the uh, nature of the, t of the sample that we have to prepare. Then uh, the sample weight, so the amount of the sample that we have to choose to digest the sample, and this is dependent to the, uh, to the, also the type of analysis you have to do. So if you have to work with trace metals, you have to analyze trace metal, of course you need a higher sample amount. And the sample weight influence also the instrument configuration. Then the acid chemistry, of course, so the type of acid and acid mixture we need to perform the complete to perform the digestion of the sample. And then the temperature. That is the key point to completely dissolve the, the samples during the, the preparation. So starting about the sample type. Uh, we can divide the samples in three different big fields. So we can divide them uh, in environmental samples that usually include uh, soils and water samples, organic and inorganic samples. So as I said, the environmental samples uh, are usually soil and water. Soils can be sediment, any, type, any kind of uh, of soils, materials, and uh, water can be drinking water, but also river water or wastewater. And the environmental samples uh, are usually digested by official methods, and uh, uh, usually the official methods used for the sample preparation of this type of samples are the EPA methods, or equivalent to the EPA methods. Um, so basically, if I have to digest uh, environmental samples, I must follow the rules, basically. So the, I must follow the official methods where are described all the, all the uh, parameters I need to perform the sample preparation. And later we will see the details about that. Concerning, concerning the organic samples, we can divide the organic samples into two big groups. So we have uh, samples with medium-low reactivity and the samples with high reactivity. Uh, the difference uh, is, is important here because they react in a different way during the sample preparation. So the high reactivity usually generate high pressure and uh, we uh, have to choose the right configuration, especially for the high reactivity samples. However, just to give you an idea, for the medium low, low reactivity samples, uh, we, uh, we usually mean samples from agriculture, samples of beverage, clinical, food, or cosmetic samples, and also some pharmaceutical samples. But I put the pharmaceutical samples also in the high reactivity because uh, pharmaceuticals are very different and there are also very reactive samples. And uh, in the reactive samples, I put also polymers and petrochemicals. Concerning the inorganic samples, inorganic samples is the field that, uh, where we find all the uh, materials, like ceramics, like geological uh, materials, uh, like ores, oxides, metals, and, cat and catalysts. So all uh, uh, compounds that are not carbon-based basically. So all compounds that are very, uh, that are usually from mining or uh, metals nature. So during the digestion process, uh, the important things uh, is uh, the, also to recognize the nature of the sample in order to understand a little bit how this could react during the, the sample digestion. So considering an organic samples, medium reactivity or high reactivity sample, we usually digest the sample using nitric acid. 
The nitric acid reacts with, uh, um, react with the, the sample, the carbon in the sample, and generates the CO2 and the NOx. The formation of CO2 and NOx into a closed vessel that are usually used for sample preparation with macro systems generate a pressure. So the sample amount influence the pressure during the sample prep. Increasing the sample amount, I increase the pressure inside the vessel of digestion. So this is a very uh, important parameter to consider because this influences also the configuration of the microwave system that we are going to use. Today in the market are available several technologies that allow us to uh, cover different type of, to, cover the, uh, to prepare different type of samples at different type of sample amount. So we have medium pressure rotors that usually the maximum sample amount for an organic sample is 0.5 grams. Then uh, high pressure rotors that allow to work up to one gram of organic sample. And then uh, we have the SRC technology that allow to work with two grams of samples or more. Then depends about the reactivity of, of the materials and the samples. So the sample amount influences uh, the pressure during the digestion that influences the um, the, the configuration basically to choose to, for, for your samples and for your lab. The other parameters that influence the, uh, the configuration is also the reactivity of the sample because, uh, as I said, organic samples can have a, a low or medium reactivity or high reactivity. The difference basically is the pressure that this generates during the digestion. With a medium reactivity, we have a low pressure. With a high reactivity, we have a big jump of pressure. So this influences the sample amount and influence also the configuration, uh, the microwave configuration that we, we choose for the sample preparation. So the other important parameters, of course, are the acids, the reagents that we usually use to perform the digestions. The most common reagents used are nitric acid, hydrogen peroxide, that is not an acid, of course, and hydrochloric acid and hydrofluoric acid. Nitric or nitric with peroxide are commonly used for the digestion of organic samples, medium, low reactivity or high reactivity samples. Then hydrochloric is usually used in a mixture with nitric acid called aqua regia. And uh, hydrochloric acid is usually used for inorganic materials. So like uh, precious metals or oxides or coarse materials. And then the hydrochloric acid is usually suggested for samples that contain a high amount of silicates, or in some cases, especially for some pharmaceutical materials, it is used for uh, the digestion of titanium oxide. The other parameters that influence the digestion is, of course, the temperature. Consider that high, the, the temperature, uh, higher is the temperature, better is then the quality of the digestion and the final solution. This is a very simple uh, example where we digest uh, baby food material, half gram of baby food, at different temperatures, at 180 degrees in the first run, and then at 200 degrees in the second run. And as you can see, we obtain two different solutions, where uh, the solutions number one, we have an incomplete digestion of the sample. In the, in the solution number two, we have a completely digested sample without solid particles inside. This because uh, we need uh, energy to allow to speed up the digestion, uh, the reaction of the digestion, and higher is this energy, faster is then and better is then the, the, the digestion process. And this energy is uh, 
is uh, uh, generated by microwave and of course we control the microwave by the temperature. So basically higher is the temperature, better is the quality of the final solution and the digestion. Anyway, just to give you some indications of temperatures to use according to your samples, this is, is a very general guidelines. Of course, there are exceptions. Of course, there are samples uh, that uh, require some adjustment in the method. So take these as very general guidelines, but I think these are good starting point, especially for unknown samples. So for environmental, usually, as I said, we follow uh, the EPA method. And the temperature usually suggested is up to 180 degrees. Then there we have organics uh, with the medium or higher activity. And then we have uh, the inorganics, where usually inorganics uh, we digest, uh, we need a very uh, high temperature in order to complete the digestion and the preparation of this type of materials. So, here, just to give you some indications of uh, the preparation of your samples, and uh, starting from the soil and sediment, as I said, uh, we, uh, we have to follow the, the official methods. And the official method is the EPA 3051 or the EPA 3052. The EPA 3051 is for all type of soil and sediment, and the 3052 is mainly focused for soil and sediment with high silicates inside. So the sample amount is suggested is 0.5 grams, and we have three different acids uh, mixtures that we can choose. Uh, we can work with only nitric acid or a mixture with nitric and hydrochloric. And this is called reverse aqua regia. Or we can use uh, a mixture of nitric and HF. So the first two are from the EPA 3051, and the third one is from the EPA 3052. So I usually uh, work with hydrochloric acid, and this is right in the method. So if you want to have a look to the method, you find all this information. Uh, but I usually work with hydrochloric acid when I have to recover also elements like aluminum, antimonium, barium, beryllium, chromium, iron, magnesium, uh, uh, silver, and vanadium. So these are uh, uh, so if you have to analyze also this element, uh, it is strongly recommended to use hydrochloric acid, so to use the second acid mix. And as I said, if you have samples with a lot of silicates inside, we suggest to use uh, a mixture of uh, HF, so to use the EPA 3052 method. The working temperature is the same for the both uh, methods. So usually the working temperature suggested is at 175 degrees. 175 degrees plus minus 5 degrees of, of tolerance. Concerning the water samples, uh, even here we have an official method that we follow, and the official method is the 3015. And the sample amount uh, for this method is uh, usually is 45 ml. So we load 45 milliliters of water samples and we mix it with 5 ml of nitric acid. The working temperature is up to 170 degrees and uh, usually the digestion of this sample is very, very easy. So concerning the configurations and the microwave systems that we normally uh, use and we normally suggest for the digestion of these samples. Uh, if we have uh, to digest soil samples, uh, we can use a medium pressure rotor or a high pressure rotor or also ISRC technology. For water samples, uh, we usually suggest the high pressure rotors or the medium pressure rotor. We don't suggest the uh, SRC technology because uh, we need a big amount of, uh, uh, of, uh, of samples, so 45 ml. And these uh, influence the productivity. 
in a SLC technology. So in order to have a good productivity and in order to have uh, yes, a good productivity in your lab, uh, we suggest uh, usually the medium pressure rotor. So usually for environmental samples for both soils and water, usually I use uh, the medium pressure rotor. Then of course it's possible to use the high pressure rotor or the SLC technology for, for the soil materials. And this is a very simple um, digestion of the soil. So we load uh, 0 0.5 grams uh, and we use the second uh, acid mixture. So the digestion uh, were perform was performed at uh, 175 degrees. And here are recoveries of uh, the lake sediments. So we use the standard materials and recoveries of the sandy loam. Uh, also, this is a, is a um, standard material. All these uh, detail elements, uh, sorry, all, all the details about this test are into an application report that you can uh, ask and then we can send, send to you for where you find more details also about the configuration used for the digestion and for the analysis. Concerning the organic samples, uh, samples with medium low reactivity usually we suggest a sample amount up to two grams but remember that this is according to the configuration that you have so two grams is if you have a SLC technology then if you have a high pressure rotor um, the sample amount is, is, a, is less so is one gram and with a medium pressure rotor is 0 0.5 grams uh, the reagents use, used are usually nitric acid or a mixture of nitric acid and peroxide uh, and usually uh, for uh, the, the mixture of nitric acid and peroxide is very common especially for medium pressure rotor and high pressure rotor because uh, the peroxide helps in the digestion uh, giving oxygen to the reaction. But if you have an SRC technology, usually uh, you, don't need, you don't really need to work uh, with uh, peroxide because the SRC technology allows you to increase, to digest your sample at a very high temperature conditions. So it is not anymore necessary to add uh, oxygen in the reaction because the temperature is enough to complete the digestion of, of your, sample, your samples, yes. So the working conditions usually are from 180 degrees up to 200 degrees. As I said, if you have an SRC technology, you can also work up to 260 degrees. But this is just a, uh, just a guidelines, uh, a general guidelines for digestion of, of a different type of uh, medium low reactivity samples, organic samples. Concerning samples with higher activity, of course, uh, we have to uh, reduce the sample amount. And usually we work with 0 0.3 grams, 0 0.5 grams, really depends about the uh, organic, the nature of the sample. And uh, as for the medium reactivity samples, we work with mixture of nitric or uh, nitric and peroxide or we work with a mixture of nitric and water. So basically it is possible to, it is sometimes suggested, especially with the SRC technology, to perform the digestion with diluted acid. Because the diluted acid reduces the speed of the exothermic reaction. So working with diluted acid, the microwave system is uh, able to better control the uh, exothermic reaction during the run. The working temperature are usually from 180 up to 220 degrees, especially if you have uh, uh, samples like pharmaceuticals or also some polymer samples requires a little bit higher temperature. So 200 to 220 degrees usually. The configuration suggested for the uh, organic samples for the medium and low reactivity with the medium and low reactivity are the medium pressure rotor, high pressure rotor, or the SRC technology. 
Of course, the difference between the configurations uh, are the sample amount. But consi considering the high reactivity samples, usually we do not suggest the medium pressure rotor. Uh, you can, of course, use it, but the sample amount uh, must be reduced to 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams. So usually this amount of sample is not really representative. And uh, usually here in the lab, I prefer uh, to uh, work with a high pressure rotor or uh, to work with the uh, SRC technology, the ultra wave system. And here an example of digestion, uh, alpha gram of sample, 5 ml of nitric acid up to 210 degrees. And uh, here the recoveries of, of the samples. And also for this, uh, you can uh, uh, ask for the application report where you have uh, details about uh, these, uh, uh, these tests. So you can find also the method used for the digestion of this test uh, with the ramp uh, of the temperature and all details. And now the inorganic samples. So if uh, uh, for uh, organic we usually use uh, uh, nitric acid for the digestion, with the inorganic samples uh, the, it's a little bit more complex. So there is a big, uh, big variety of uh, samples compositions and the sample preparation procedure are strongly dependent to the chemical nature of the material. And uh, uh, usually if you uh, have already have a method for digestion of inorganics on your hot plate and you want to transfer this method to the microwave system, it is very common to use the same acid mixtures that you commonly use on your hot plate into the uh, microwave system. So we basically transfer the acid chemistry in the microwave unit. The inorganic samples uh, usually are uh, usually do not generate any exothermal reactions. However, we suggest to work with a small sample amount in order to increase the uh, surface of contact with the acid. So to have a more efficient, uh, efficient um, in order to increase the efficiency of the digestion. And usually I digest uh, the samples uh, starting from 0 0.1 gram and uh, or 0 0.3 grams. And the digestion temperature suggested uh, usually are from 200 degrees up to 280 degrees because uh, the uh, these type of samples are very, very uh, strong. So the um, chemical bonds are very, very strong and we need a big energy, high energy to break the samples, to dissolve the samples in solution. So this is the reason why we need to work uh, at a very high temperature conditions. And in, the, in that case, for organic samples, uh, um, the acid mixtures uh, change according to the nature of the sample. So it is quite difficult that you can digest an inorganic sample using only nitric acid. Usually you have to combine the acid uh, in order to obtain the complete uh, uh, digestion of your sample. And these are very uh, a few guidelines uh, for you that this is usually what I do in the lab when I receive an inorganic sample. Uh, usually I, I start with a very small amount, so I usually start with 0 0.1 gram of sample, and then I immediately test the sample with an aqua region, so mixture of hydrochloric and nitric, or uh, if there is a big presence of silicates, I use also some HF into the acid mixture. Uh, I work, uh, uh, the working temperature in that case uh, just uh, depends about the uh, configuration you have. So if you have a high pressure rotor, I suggest you to test the samples immediately at 240 degrees. But if you have an SRC technology, I suggest you to test the samples at 270 or 280 degrees. And uh, yes, for inorganic samples, uh, the rotor configuration, the microwave configuration that we suggest uh, are high pressure rotors or SRC technology. 
The medium pressure rotor is not really suggested unless you are looking for, uh, uh, you are doing a leaching of the sample. So in that case, it uh, could be a solution. But usually for inorganics like metals and geological samples, high pressure rotor and SRC technologies uh, like ultrawave are the best uh, uh, configurations to obtain the complete identity. So these are uh, general guidelines. Uh, this is the starting point to create a method for your samples. And the inorganic samples, we know that sometimes are quite difficult. And uh, for this reason, uh, we have, uh, uh, you have available some tools from Milestone in order to find a solution, in order to uh, find a proper microwave uh, proper method for the digestion of your samples. So we provide you a library that is installed in the, in the software where you have details of the microwave programs, but also details of the chemistry. So the sample amount and the acid mixtures. Then uh, you have, uh, with all our configuration, so with all microwave systems, uh, we provide you the milestone connect the Milestone Connect is a website where you can find information about application reports, application reports and uh, you also find scientific papers of, uh, uh, related to the sample preparation. And then, of course, uh, we have a local uh, Milestone specialist ready to help you and to give you support to, for the method development. So, this, uh, these are some screenshots of the library of the, of the, of, uh, the software where you have uh, the different fields of applications and where we have also details about the sample amount and the assets uh, suggested for your samples. In uh, the library, you, we have, you can find already up to 300 methods. If this is not sufficient, you can use the Milestone Connect where today we have uh, more than 400 methods, 500 methods already. Uh, so this is a, is a source of application notes, new application notes, but also scientific papers that, that, that can be useful for you, for the development of your method. Then you can find information uh, of, of your units and uh, you can find some tips and techniques uh, for the maintenance of the units that are very, very important and the information about the spare parts, consumables and all these, uh, these materials. Mm, these are the screenshots of uh, the Connect uh, where this is, is the list of papers we have divided by fields and this is an example of uh, the information you can find for the digestion of inorganic samples, like geological samples. And we have uh, a big, uh, a huge uh, um, list of samples already digested with all the methods that you can download and, uh, and use. The methods are updated year by year, so you can, I suggest you to have a look to the Management Connect uh, just to see if there are some new updates. And then the last but not the least uh, is uh, the direct uh, support. So we have uh, uh, application specialist, uh, milestone specialist uh, they, they, uh, that you can contact directly uh, from your, your, uh, your country. And uh, they are uh, directly in contact with us. So we uh, provide them uh, uh, um, uh, the training courses, uh, so we update them with new applications uh, and uh, other informations in order to give you the fast and better support uh, as possible. And then you can, through the Milestone Contact, uh, to, through the Milestone Connect, sorry, you can uh, directly contact uh, uh, the application specialist in order to have uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, details about your samples and in order to find a solution and find a proper digestion method for your samples. So thank you for uh, your attention. I hope, uh, I hope uh, these informations uh, will be useful for you. <laughs> and uh, I now answer to some of your questions. 
I see a lot of questions, so I, I'll answer to some of them, and then uh, if, if there is no time, I will anyway answer to you by email, so don't worry. Within today, you will receive my, my answer. Um, so this is an interesting question. Uh, this, uh, uh, the question is, for soil and sediment, what would be the correct acid mixture if I want to do a full analysis of elements? Uh, this is a very interesting uh, question because uh, basically you are asking the complete digestion of uh, the soil samples. The soil, uh, yes, yeah, soil samples. Uh, you can obtain the complete digestion of your soil sample, but uh, uh, be careful because uh, if you want to obtain the complete digestion of the soil, you have uh, you will have uh, a very complex acid mixture where you use nitric acid, hydrochloric, HF, phosphoric, sulfuric. So it's a very complex and acid mixture that uh, could make some troubles during the analysis. So this is the reason why the easiest way is to work with the official methods. So the official methods doesn't, uh, do not give you the complete digestion of the samples, but it's a leaching of uh, elements from the sample. And this is the most reliable and fast way in order to, uh, to run the analysis of, the of, of different types of elements. You can, have, uh, you can have a list of elements that uh, can be leached by the samples directly in the method. The method is free, so you can download the method, or anyway, we can provide you uh, the method. And then you can uh, see all the uh, elements that you can download. So there is another question that is very interesting, and it's uh, how many samples we can digest at a time uh, in, a, in a digestion process. It's an interesting question because this depends about the configuration. Uh, if you have uh, a medium pressure rotor, usually are designed with 44 positions. The minus one medium pressure rotor has uh, the 40, 44 vessels. So you can perform 40, the simultaneous digestion of 44 samples. The high pressure rotor of milestone, of course, we have 15 positions. And uh, also the SRC technology allow you to digest up to uh, 15 or 22 positions, depending about the uh, reactivity of your samples. But the SRC technology is also faster compared to the others. So uh, the uh, number of samples uh, usually are, uh, so the productivity are usually according to the, the rotor configurations, so the, 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 the configuration and the macro configuration are uh, related to your samples. So we have to first start with your samples to then uh, choose the right configuration for your lab. Um, other question? Okay, there is another question that is more uh, a little bit specific and is uh, how could the acid mixture influence the extraction of heavy metals in food samples? So usually the, for food samples, as I said, we use uh, nitric or nitric and peroxide. And usually this is uh, good for the extraction of all elements from your samples, from my experience. Uh, I know there are some pharmaceutical companies where they have uh, they prefer to use some uh, um, some uh, hydrochloric acid to stabilize mercury, for example. But for food samples, I don't do that very honestly, and uh, I also analyze mercury from food samples, and uh, I usually work with uh, nitric acid. So my suggestion is to use nitric acid or nitric and peroxide. If you have to analyze mercury, probably you can add uh, half ml of, uh, of hydrochloric just to stabilize this element, but usually it's not really necessary. Uh, OK. 
Okay. So I I have a lot of questions here, so I read just the last question and then I'll answer to you by email. And uh, this is a very interesting question, and uh, because uh, it is um, related to the acids, and there is uh, which acid grade do you I have to use for digestion and analysis in ICPMS? Okay, the acid grade is not really related to the digestion process. So the purity of the acid is related to the anal analysis you have to do. So if you are working with an ICPMS, uh, usually we we suggest to use a, a trace metal uh, super poor uh, acid, uh, where the contaminations where inside the acids are from one up to 100 ppt. So this friends. But uh, the acid grades uh, usually do not really influence the digestion. Uh, however, milestone provides also um, systems for the purification of the acids. So if you are interested, you can uh, check in our website. And uh, we have uh, units that from uh, uh, dirty acids, basically you can produce a supra pure acid in your lab. Or if you need more information, I send you by email. So thank you everyone for uh, for the, the attention. I will uh, answer to all your questions by uh, through the email uh, of all the remaining questions. And uh, soon you will also receive the, regi the registration of this uh, WebEx, so you can uh, have a look again to the slides uh, and to the methods. I hope this uh, was useful for you, and uh, thank you for the attention, and uh, see you in the next uh, Milestone webinar.